interested in life began. Our life began when we stepped out of that darkness into the light of God. How awesome is that? Watch out. That we no longer have to walk in that darkness. We're walking in the glory of God. We are God's children this morning and every day and so on. Jesus is our God. He's our Father. Amen. And I am so proud of you for being here this morning. Being obedient to God in our church. Coming to our church. And no matter what's happening in our lives, we are still obedient to God's word. Because we are the life of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo! <laughs> hallelujah. Gracias Dios. Hallelujah. Praise God. This morning, as uh, we uh, read the offering verse of John 8, 12. And Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you, have, you won't have to walk in darkness anymore. Glory to yes! Ooh, look at the word he just said. We no longer have to walk in the darkness. We can walk in the light of Jesus. Praise God. <laughs> because you will have the light that leads you to life. Wow. To light. That means we're not walking. When we, when we die, we're walking into the light of the cross. The living God of Jesus. We got a place that's been secured for us. Glory to Jesus. Oh, let's pray for the offering this morning. Gloria, gloria, tu nombre, Señor, aleluya. Gracias, Padre, por las bendiciones, Señor. Thank you, Jesus, for the offerings we received this morning, God. We give them all to your kingdom, Father. As you return it, 100 volts, according to your word, Father. We ask that you bless our offerings this morning and your people. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. amen. Praise God. <laughs>
can trust in you. That God, that you are worthy to be trusted. That you always keep your word. That you are with us no matter what we are going through. And Lord, we just thank you for your message for us today. That you are the light in the darkness for us. That you already know what we're going to face tomorrow, and you've already taken care of it. You've already given us the strength that we need, and that you're going to be with us at every step in our life. And so, Lord, we just want to thank you for that. We thank you, God, for just speaking your word over us today. Lord, my voice is yours. And, uh, Father, my, my prayer today is that people will not hear my voice, but they will hear your voice. Yeah. Holy Spirit, I'm asking today that you would speak over us through your word, that you would change our hearts, and that you would encourage us. And we would be so encouraged that we would be used to be a light yeah. in this world. Yeah. Uh, Lord, so I send forth that blessing today in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, good morning, Freedom House. Good morning. It's so good to see all of you and be with all of you. And uh, I think we've already had the message today from Pastor Jesse. Would you agree? <laughs> yes. Um, I love that. He's excited. And he should be excited. Because we have the light of Christ, right? And we love light. Uh, it's pretty exciting today because it is March 1st. Uh, thinking about March 1st, you know what that means? Spring is around the corner. And light is coming. More light is coming. So we uh, started a brand new starting series. Uh, it is called Jesus Is. And um, this whole sermon series is to help you prepare for Easter. Easter is only six weeks away. And uh, we've got a challenge for you that you would be reading in the book of John uh, during this six-week time. And that as you're spending time in the book of John, that you're getting to know Jesus again. That as you're spending time with him, there's that gratefulness that you have for what Jesus has done for us. And so I just encourage you to take that challenge uh, from the book of John. And really, John is the book that is recommended when uh, someone receives Christ because it really explains in detail about Jesus. It was written by the disciple John, and um, he was the son of Zebedee, and uh, he had a brother named James. Now, these two had hot tempers, and uh, sometimes Jesus would call them the sons of thunder because uh, John would get so mad that the people would listen to their message that he wanted to rain fire and brimstone down on them. And so Jesus would say, oh, okay, sons of thunder. And um, so if you've got a temper this morning, uh, I, just, I just want this to comfort you uh, that God can take your passion and he can use it for good. Uh, so on several occasions, uh, Jesus has called me a daughter of thunder. <laughs> and he's been, he's been doing a lot of work in me over in the years. And uh, he did a lot of work in John. And John became the man that God had called him to be. So the book of John is divinely inspired by the Holy Spirit. But it's kind of fun because we see a little of the human side of John because he likes to tell us that he is the beloved. So he is, he is more beloved than all those other guys. He's saying, forget about those guys. I was Jesus' favorite. <laughs> and, um, you know, Jesus has a way of doing that, doesn't he? He kind of makes us all feel 
like we're the beloved, that we're his favorite. So John is giving us an eyewitness account of Jesus' life, and he refers to himself in John 21, 24 through 25. This is a disciple who testifies to these things and who wrote them down. We know that his testimony is true. Jesus did many other things as well. And if every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. Wouldn't you like to read some of those books? Um, John is testifying to the truth of who Jesus is. And he's writing to believers everywhere, to both the Jews and the Gentiles. Many in John's original audience had a Greek background, which explains why John starts off in that first verse calling Jesus the Word, the Logos. Uh, John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John is calling Jesus the Word. He's appealing to those who've had a Greek education because they understood the word Logos. Logos is the Greek term translated as word, speech, principle, or thought. In Greek philosophy, it is also referred as to the universal divine reason or the mind of God. The Greeks understood order and wisdom. They knew that there was a power keeping the world in order. It wasn't just happening by itself. There was a power that was keeping everything together. And John knew about their beliefs in uh, the mythological gods like Zeus. But what God, but, but what John is wanting his Greek readers to know is that Jesus is superior to their gods. He is the one who was present at the beginning of the world. John is also speaking to the traditional Jews. In Hebrew, the word of God refers to God in action, especially in creation. They believed that divine wisdom was present and active at the creation of the world. The world uh, the word was also another expression for God. John is explaining to all of his readers that the word was with God and that they sh he shared this nature and the being of God and was an extension of the personality of God. The deeds and words of Jesus are the deeds and words of God. John, on purpose, in John 1, 1, starts out with the same words that are found in Genesis 1, 1, in the beginning. So in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So Genesis 1-1 introduces the beginning of creation. And creation happens by the word of God. A word is a mean of com communication. It's the expression of what's in your mind. You think it and you say it. So the beauty of this world around us is an expression of God. You are an expression of God. John is making a statement in John 1.1 1, 1, that in the very beginning, when heaven and earth were created, Jesus was present. Jesus was already existing in close as 
association with God. Jesus wasn't just a good teacher or a good man. Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus was born fully human, but he was fully God. In John 1, 2 through 3, he was with God in the beginning, and through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. So in Genesis 1, 2 through 3, the whole earth is formless and empty, and darkness is covered over the deep waters. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. And God spoke three words, let there be light. And then the universe was created. And when light happened, life began. You cannot have life without light. Even our human DNA is formed from the language, the logos of God. And that determines our cellular structure and who and what we become. Each individual is a result of the words spoken over them by God. God has spoken a word over every single one of you. You exist and you have a divine purpose. You were created to reflect the light of our almighty God. As humans, it's part of our DNA to need the light that God spoke into being. It is why we're rejoicing that spring is coming, right? Because we're gonna have more light it's uh, no longer at 6 o'clock is it dark. Uh, we're not having to come home from work in the dark. And uh, we love that light. In uh, John 8, 12, Jesus speaks these words. I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. John 1, 4 through 5, in him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Jesus' life brings light to everyone. All biological and spiritual life comes from him. Eternal life is given to us when we receive Christ. We will not die in darkness, but we will be surrounded by light. Jesus left his heavenly home with God the Father to be our light in a dark world. Light stands for goodness, truth, life. Darkness is evil, lies, death. Jesus experienced that darkness on the cross. And without Christ's light, we would be in total darkness. The enemy of our soul brings darkness into the world. And he tried to extinguish the light of Christ, but he cannot do it. The darkness cannot overcome the light. Right. The word overcome speaks of a past finished victory and a present state of being an overcomer. Jesus experienced that darkness when sin was put on him on the cross. But he defeated that sin in death. He was in the darkness of the grave. There was darkness when Jesus said his last breath on the cross. And he was in that grave for three days. But he rose. He rose out of that grave. And I believe there was blinding light that went forth. The blinding light of the Holy Spirit. In Revelations 21, it says, 
that there is no need for light in heaven because Jesus is the eternal light. Victory over darkness is finished. It is complete and it is continual. Light and darkness are opposites, but they are not opposites of equal power. Light cannot be overcome by the darkness. Light will win every time. The darkness of sin cannot overcome us. The darkness of death cannot overcome us. The darkness of this world will not overcome us. God's plan from the very beginning has been to give us light through Jesus. Uh, in Isaiah 9, it prophesizes that Jesus will be the light in this dark world. Isaiah 9, 2, the people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in the land of deep, deep darkness, a light will shine. People are afraid of the darkness in this world. Have you been seeing it on the news about the, well, of course you have, on the coronavirus, right? It's everywhere. People are buying the surgical masks off the shelf. There aren't any left because they're afraid. They're afraid of death. They're afraid of the unknown. They are afraid of the darkness. The stock market fell two straight days, 900 points in one day because of fear, the fear of darkness. You can watch the debates, right? The democratic debates as we're getting ready for the elections and we get afraid of darkness. Um, Amen. There's the, the locusts eating all the crops in Africa. Uh, there are wars and rumors of wars, and the world looks so dark. But the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness will not overcome it. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. Uh, so my husband has a fetish with flashlights. <laughs> I'm not kidding. He has, probably, he has probably had like 200 flashlights in his life. He is always searching for the best um, flashlight out there and it is and it's all about the lumens he tells me this one has more lumens um, which is a measurement of light uh, and you know back in the day uh, there were many Christmases that his special gift was a mag light because I knew he was gonna love it right uh, but mag lights um, aren't the best flashlight around anymore. So I thought I'd have him kind of demonstrate the differences in the, the flashlights now. So just to show you how far technology has come, this is a mag light, 3C battery. These are only 30, now by the way, I just put brand new batteries in this thing. I'm not kidding you. 13 lumens. That's it, yeah, your, your, your cell phone is way brighter. No, 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 no. <laughs> and I thought this was the bomb. So then they started, whoops. Yeah. Now this is the same light, 3C in the LED, 700 lumens. So they've come a long way, baby. And here's just a little bitty guy, it's only two double A's. If I turn it on here, turn the light on. There we go. It is 400 lumens and it's only dinky little thing. So I'm always looking for lights for backpacking and stuff like that. I don't know why I love lights. I was never really afraid of the dark. I really like to recall, but I, just like, I guess I just like light, like my wife was preaching. Yes, about. you do. But haven't they come a long way? Woo! They yeah. have. So, you know, we, we don't buy flash darks. Right. Do you think you know that? We don't buy flash darks. 
We buy flash lights, right? Because the light overcomes the darkness. So no matter how good our human attempts are at creating light, and you see we're getting better and better with those flashlights, we can't even come close to the lumens of Jesus. Amen. Jesus is pure light. When we bring our sin to Jesus, the darkness cannot overcome us anymore. Once our sin is brought into the light, the darkness no longer has power over us. So when we have the sin, something that we're dealing with, and we go to a brother or a sister that we trust, and we confess that sin, and we ask them to pray for us, that sin, that darkness, no longer has power over us, because the light of Christ overcomes it. Or when we go to God in prayer, and we say, Lord, I don't want this darkness in me anymore. The light comes in and he overcomes that darkness. Amen. And when the darkness of the world tries to overwhelm us, Jesus' light shines through it. We can be at peace and we can be filled with life. Jesus tells us in John 10.10, 10, I have come to give you life and to give you life to the fullest. And that is possible through his light. John 1, 6 through 8, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light <clears throat> so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. So John is not speaking about himself. He's speaking about John the Baptist. And what he's trying to let us know is that John the Baptist is the one that has been prophesied about that is going to prepare the way for the Messiah. Isaiah 43 a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. John is putting all the facts together for us, and he's declaring that the promised Messiah is Jesus. John the Baptist is the one that God is going to use as his voice to tell the people to get ready. John the Baptist testified, and he was a witness of Jesus, but he was not the light. He only reflected the light. As followers of Jesus, we are witnesses of his light. We are the ones who reflect his light in this dark world. We are the voice of God. We are the ones who tell the world, don't be afraid. He is with us. We are the Holy Spirit-powered flashlights shining out God's light to a dark world. Our lumens become brighter the more time we spend with Jesus. The more time we spend praying, reading our Bibles, just sitting in his presence, the brighter our light becomes. John 1, 9-13 The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a human husband's will, but born of God. 
Joan Osborne kind of sings a haunting song. What if God was one of us? The Jews had been waiting for the Messiah for hundreds and hundreds of years, and Jesus came, and he fulfilled one prophecy after another, but they didn't recognize him. God was one of us. He didn't come as a rich king or a powerful political leader. He came as a baby born in a stable, a dirty stable, to two poor people. He made his home with us, right in the middle of darkness. He came to understand and experience our pain, to be our light and to help us overcome the darkness of sin, to come against hate with love, to give hope and comfort God was one of us, but we didn't recognize him. We cried out for him to be crucified. We rejected him. But for those who recognize Jesus, who believe in his name, we are forgiven and we become a child of God. We, we are children of light. Do we recognize Jesus? Do we see him? We no longer have to be afraid of the darkness. We can have the light of Christ, and his light gives us life here on earth and eternal life forever. John 1, 14, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. The Word, Jesus became human and he became one of us. He made his home here on earth and the Word was with God and the Word is with us. We see his glory and we see the effects of Jesus' light in this world, and we hear the words of God spoken over us in troubled times. No matter what we face in this world, we do not have to fear, because Jesus' light overcomes the darkness. The light of Christ within us brings light into our dark world, and we become the high-powered flashlights of the Holy Spirit. We are children of God, children of light. We are his voice, his word to tell people, do not fear. I am with you, and you will overcome. This morning, as, as we go to prayer, if there's something in you, some darkness, uh, maybe just fear that uh, the enemy has tried to put on you, that you would just release that fear to the one who gives us light. That if there's a, a sin that you've been struggling with in your heart, that you would come before God and you would, you would bring it into the light so that the darkness no longer can rule over you. And if you have not received the light of Christ, that you would do that today, that you wouldn't waste any more time. The world just is dark, but that you would have that light, and that comes by just asking Jesus, be my light, forgive my sins. So let's, let's pray. Lord, we come to you today, and we thank you that you are our light. We thank you, God, that you have overcome the darkness. Uh, we thank you, Lord, that that light within us gives us life. And Lord, you see our hearts and you see what we're struggling with this morning. Lord, you see our fears, uh, the fears that get built upon in this world. That, Lord, you would come against that fear and instead you would give us life. That you would give us freedom from that fear. 
and that we would be children of the light and we would walk in the light as you are in the light. And Lord, you know that there are people that do not know you that are hearing this message today and that they would receive you, that they would say, Lord, I want you to be my light. Forgive my sins. I give my life to you. Lord, that they would pray that prayer today and they would be set free from the darkness. Lord, we just thank you for the light. We thank you how it gives us life and it breathes new life in us. And we just speak that over all of us today, God, yes. that as we walk out of this place today, that we would just feel that. We would just feel, I'm a child of God. I'm a child of the light. Yes. In Jesus' powerful name, amen. Yes. amen. Well, um, I just wanted to, I thought I would maybe share how we're coming against the darkness and we're bringing light. And um, I didn't tell Doug I was going to do this, but Doug, could you come up and talk to us about um, on Friday nights when you go into the jail and uh, what's happening there? Um, Rudy, you could come up too. <laughs> <laughs> if I put on the sew out, you are too. <laughs> Friday night, Rudy and I go in the jail. Uh, wow. Celebrate recovery inside. Wow. And um, we do a testimony one week and then a lesson the next wow. week. What was last Friday was testimony. And, and so rather than, you know, I, I said that we would. Uh, Talk about what God's doing in our lives, you know, and, and as we're in recovery. And uh, so after Doug had talked for a little bit, one of the the inmates started talking about the fears that, it, that are going through him, and, and the rest of the group was saying the same thing too. When they get released, you know, the fear that they have of uh, what it's going to be like to for, be free, and, and where are they going to live, where are they going to, you know. Because their whole lives have been spent in, in drugs and criminal activities. And, you know, and I, I'm in the same boat. You know, my whole life was in that. So I'm going to let Rudy talk some. Oh, no. No, <laughs> no I, I, you know what? I just do it and ensure my, my strength, uh, hope, and, and, and my and my weaknesses too, because that uh, you know they, they, they if they if you give too much uh, too much hope and too much strength and like hey you know what this guy it's like Superman <laughs> you know so I, I let them know that hey you know what I was there many times I was right where were you sitting I was there many times and uh, and this is what you can uh, what you can do you know little by little don't think so big that you, you you feel like a failure if you don't accomplish anything big you know start with little things something small so <laughs> You know, they, they never spoke, uh, someone never spoke life into them, so that's, that's all I do. I just, I don't tell them what they want to hear, but you know what, what where they're going, and, and I can help you. You know, we can walk together if you want to go there. So. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And we need volunteers. Um, yeah, we need volunteers. Volunteers, yeah. And more people. To, to go out there in the darkness and say, hey, there is light. Um, I liked uh, Doug was talking about it, that, you know, that they're sharing the good things, that so much of the time they talk about the hard things, but they're going in there and sharing that life can be good. And that's what God has called us to do. We're a light in a dark world. But our light overcomes the darkness and uh, I gave you guys a little candle. Um, if I could have the lights down and the, the door shut and... Um, well, I don't have a, lot. I don't have a lighter. <laughs> if you've got your cell phone, use that. You know, 
already you can just see what a difference just even one light can make. But then when we all get together, how that light becomes magnified and how that light becomes stronger and that light becomes brighter in our dark world. And that each one of you has a light in you. When you receive Christ, you've got that light in you. And God is calling you to be his word. He's calling you to be his voice, to go out there and to shine your light. You know that little song, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. So Freedom House, as you're going home from here today, think about how you're going to shine your light. Let that be your prayer this week. God, use my light to overcome the darkness in this world. Uh, yes? Uh, you verify my I was thinking about the, uh, this week. Uh, and I was, I'm going to thank this crew for loving me. Oh, they love good on me. But, you know, I stay at home and watch a lot of TV. And I'm watching the news. And, you know, the garbage is there. Even though you don't want it. If, if you're watching the news, it's still coming in there. And I find my heart getting heavy. Woo! Yes. Yeah. And the people pouring their love on me. And the Holy Spirit just cleaning me up on the inside. And I'm ready for another week. Yes. Oh, God, Woo! Yeah, we need each other. We need each other. That light grows when we come together. Yeah. So, Freedom House, shine your light. Let your light shine before men so that they see Jesus. Absolutely. Have a great week. Woo!